last call for alcohol So finish your whiskey or beer Closing time You don't have to go home But you can't stay
A singer in a smoky room A smell of wine and cheap perfume For a smile they can share the night It goes on
gentlemen of the class of 97. Wear sunscreen. If I could offer you only one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it. The long-term benefits of sunscreen have been proved by scientists, whereas the rest of my advice has no basis more reliable than my own meandering experience. I will dispense this advice now. Enjoy the power and beauty of your youth. Oh, never mind. You will not understand the power and beauty of your youth until they fade it. But trust me, in 20 years, you'll look back at photos of yourself and recall in a way you can't grasp now how much possibility lay before you and how fabulous you really looked. You are not as fat as you imagine. Don't worry about the future, or worry, but know that worrying is as effective as trying to solve an algebra equation by chewing bubblegum. The real troubles in your life are apt to be things that never crossed your worried mind, the kind that blindsides you at 4 p.m. on some idle Tuesday. Do one thing every day that scares you. Sing. Don't be reckless with other people's hearts. Don't put up with people who are reckless with yours. Floss. Don't waste your time on jealousy. Sometimes you're ahead. Sometimes you're behind. The race is long. And in the end, 
Tony with your salary. Remember compliments you receive. Forget the insults. If you succeed in doing this, tell me how. Keep your old love letters. Throw away your old bank statements. Stretch. Don't feel guilty if you don't know what you want to do with your life. The most interesting people I know didn't know at 22 what they wanted to do with their lives. Some of the most interesting 40-year-olds I know still don't. Get plenty of calcium. Be kind to your knees. You'll miss them when they're gone. Maybe you'll marry. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll have children. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll divorce at 40. Maybe you'll dance the funky chicken on your 75th wedding anniversary. Whatever you do, don't congratulate yourself too much. Or berate yourself either. Your choices are half chance. So are everybody else's. Enjoy your body. Use it every way you can. Don't be afraid of it or what other people think of it. It's the greatest instrument you'll ever own. Dance. Even if you have nowhere to do it but in your own living room. Read the directions, even if you don't follow them. Do not read beauty magazines. They will only make you feel ugly. Brother and sister, together we'll make it through. City once, but leave before it makes you hard. Live in Northern California once, but leave before it makes you soft. Travel. Accept certain inalienable truths. Prices will rise. Politicians will philander. You too will get old. And when you do, you'll fantasize that when you were young, prices were reasonable, politicians were noble, and children respected their elders. Respect your elders. Don't expect anyone else to support you. Maybe you have a trust fund. Maybe you'll have a wealthy spouse. But you never know when either one might run out. Don't mess too much with your hair. Or by the time you're 40, it will look 85. Be careful whose advice you buy. But be patient with those who supply it. Advice is a form of nostalgia. Dispensing it is a way of fishing the past from the disposal, wiping it off, painting over the ugly parts, and recycling it for more than it's worth. But trust me, on the sunscreen.
was young and knew everything She a punk who rarely ever took advice Now I'm guilt-stricken, sobbing with my head on the floor Stop a baby's breath and a shoe full of rice now Can't be held responsible She was touching her face I won't be held responsible She fell in love in the first place For the love of me I cannot remember What made us think that we were wise And we never compromised For the love of me I cannot believe we'd ever die For these sins We were merely freshmen My best friend took a week's vacation To forget her His girl took a week's worth of volume And slept And now he's guilt stricken Sobbing with his head on the floor Thinks about her now And how he never really wept He says Can't be held responsible Cause she was touching her face Won't be held responsible She fell in love in the first place For the love of me I cannot remember What made us think that we were wise And we'd never compromise For the love of me I cannot believe we'd ever die For these sins We were merely freshmen
When I was young, I knew everything. She a punk who rarely ever took advice. Now I'm guilt-stricken, sobbing with my head on the floor. Stop a baby's breath and a shoe full of rice. No. Responsible. She was touching her face. I won't be held responsible. She fell in love in the first place. For the love of me, I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we never compromised. For the life of me. I cannot believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely freshmen. My best friend took a week's vacation to forget her. This girl took a week's worth of volume and slapped him. Now he's guilt stricken, sobbing with his hair. She was touching her face. I won't be held responsible. She fell in love in the first place. For the love of me, I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we never compromised. For the love of me. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. So 
take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life I love the colorful clothes she wears And the way the sunlight plays upon her hair I hear the sound of a gentle moon On the way that lifts her perfume through the air I'm picking up good vibrations She's giving me the excitations Softly smile, I know she must be kind
Slow down. These memories are playing like a film without sound. And I 
think about now? Can we survive it out there? Can we make it somehow? I guess I thought that this would never end. And suddenly it's like the women and men. Will the past be a shadow that will follow us around? Will this memory fade when I leave this town? I keep, keep thinking that it's not goodbye. I keep on thinking it's a time to fly.
Check. One, two. What's up? Yeah. You okay? That's good. Thank you. Check one, two. Hey. Check one, two, there we go. Got this one. Monitor check. Monitors working? Yeah, they are.
Let's think to Excellent. Good morning. Just want to let everybody know a little pieces of information. So happy you could be here. We will start our ceremony in just over 10 minutes. I want you to know that we do have island photography here. They're going to be taking pictures when students receive their diploma there. And they're going to take another uh, picture of the graduate alone right in the back before they go up. Those pictures will be available in packages individually, very reasonably priced. I'll share that link after the ceremony. Graduates will be coming down these two aisles, right here, right here, proceeding around, then going up the stage. We do ask that people remain in the seats during the uh, processional, and then of course at the end during the recessional. Okay, thank you.
Will the audience please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the National Anthem? I ask that Declan Brady, Vice President of the Class of 2022, join us to lead the pledge. Following the pledge, Danielle Joshua will perform the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Declan. Thank you, Danielle. Be seated. Good morning. Welcome to the Wheatley School's 65th Annual Commencement Exercises. We are here to honor and celebrate the class of 2022 on this special day. To all the dads and the dad-like figures out there, happy Father's Day. Before we go on with the ceremonies, please be reminded to silence all electronic devices. Additionally, we ask that picture taking be done from the side aisles only. I'd like to take a moment to introduce some of our guests and ask them to stand. From our Board of Education, Mr. Mark President, Mr. Mark Hamburg, Board President. <laughs> Mr. Robert Fallerino, Board Vice President. Mr. Leonard Hirsch, Board Trustee. Mr. David Keefe, Board Trustee. Mrs. Tazni Medji, Board Trustee. From our district office, our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Elaine Canis. Our Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Danielle Gately. Our Assistant Superintendent for Business, Mrs. Diane Kassengue. From Wheatley, our assistant principal, Dr. Karen Clapper. Our director of high school life, Ms. Alexis Pace. From the East Williston Teachers Association, Ms. Merrill Ford, and president of the East Williston Teachers Association. We have faculty, staff, and administrators joining us today, both on the stage and in the front here. I'd like to ask that my colleagues who've come to help honor the class of 2022, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> I'd like to take a special moment to acknowledge our class advisors for the class of 2022, Suzanne Gluck and DJ Paulson, with a little bit of help these past few months from Timothy Schwamm. Over these past five years, they've helped guide the class through its years at Wheatley. Their efforts for the senior class have been nothing but extraordinary. Thank you. This year, our school has five staff members retiring. I'd like to thank Paul Chisholm for 13 years of service. 
Stephen Collier for 16 years of service. Randy Israel for 22 years of service. Julie Jacobson for 22 years of service. And Kevin Myers for 25 years of service. We'd like to thank them for their dedication and the commitments to our students over the years, and we wish them the best in their retirement. Finally, please thank me in joining, and please join me in thanking uh, Scott Benke and his crew, Dr. Peggy Ho and the students of the Wheatley Combined Bands, and my secretary, Susan Rockline, for all that they've done to help prepare for today. I'm honored to be able to open Wheatley's 65th commencement exercises. Please know it's an honor for me to address our graduating seniors along with their family and friends. I continue to be amazed at the remarkable talent within this district. Members of the class of 2022 have certainly earned their place as students who have demonstrated so many of the qualities that we cherish. Scholarship, individualism, confidence, generosity, athleticism, and tenacity. Although there are some of us that would have appreciated a little less procrastination and perhaps a little more attention to details at times, you know, like being able to answer the question, what time should we be at graduation today? I know that I speak for our entire school community when I say that we are grateful for all these students, or that all, we are grateful for all that uh, these students have given our school and their time with us. Some of the most challenging times that students have had to face. Of course, our graduates did not arrive here alone today. In addition to the efforts of countless teachers, counselors, coaches, and support staff over these past 13 years of schooling, these students have had the support and encouragement of their parents and family throughout this time. Graduates, please give your family members and friends a round of applause to thank them for all they have done to help you arrive today. Of course, this is a class that arrives on this stage this morning, forged in tragedy and loss. The sudden death of Hassan Suleiman just a few months before the celebratory events of these past few weeks shook our entire school and community to its core. It had a particularly profound impact on so many members of the class of 2022. The whirlwind of emotions associated with this loss, pain, sorrow, guilt, anger, and loneliness, to name a few, has weighed heavily on many of the graduates. These emotions are particularly acute during milestone events such as today. We remember Hassan today. His, sweet, his seat between Nicholas and Kate remains empty, and his name will be called when we confer diplomas later on this morning. These are gestures we can take to help manage our grief as we remember Hassan and celebrate our own successes. Nobody in our world is protected from grief and loss. In February 1862, an 11-year-old boy died of typhoid fever. What made this particular death so tragic but this, that was that this young boy was Willie Lincoln, the son of our 16th president. What made this death particularly so cruel was that it took place with President Lincoln uh, when he was not quite a year into managing what would prove to be a bloody civil war. Lincoln had to balance his tremendous grief over the loss of yet another son, for Willie was born the same year that Lincoln's second son, Edward, died of tuberculosis, with the incredible demands of being the head of a nation at war with itself. Willie's death was devastating to the president. Described by a family friend as the most lovable boy I've ever known, bright, sensible, sweet-tempered, and gentle-mannered, Willie was a favorite of President Lincoln. In the weeks and months following his death, Lincoln would often head to the Georgetown tomb containing Willie's body to remember and to weep. One of these late night visits is the subject of the 2017 George Saunders book, Lincoln and the Bardo. Even as he continued to mourn the loss of Willie, Lincoln forged ahead with the leadership of a nation at war. Life continues, even in grief. Lincoln's own personal grief helped him better understand the grief of the scores of thousands of families impacted by the war. 
Rabbi Harold S. Kirshner wrote his groundbreaking 1981 book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, in response to the death of his own son, Aaron, from a rare disease just a few days after his 14th birthday. In the book, Kushner emphasizes the central role of community in helping people through grief and pain. Going through grief in isolation can be crushing, whereas going through grief when surrounded by a community of friends and loved ones helps to ease the burden. That sense of community was certainly present in our school on Thursday, March 10th. It was also so present at the Islamic Center of Long Island on Friday, March 11th. It is present today as well. Special occasions such as today can sharpen the sense of loss. Many of us have felt that sense of loss for Hassan today, but there are other losses. Nicole and Nicholas feel that loss for their father. Ainsley feels that loss for her mother. Ashley feels that loss for her grandfather. Our community is still feeling the loss of Anthony. Just about everyone in this auditorium is wishing a loved one could share this moment with them. Community is the key to helping each other through difficult times. To our graduates here today, I ask you to look around on this stage and out in the auditorium to see those who can support you through the hard times that will certainly come your way. As you head to your post Wheatley lives, find a community to which you can belong, one that will support you through good times and challenging times. For in the end, Kushner argues, bad things may very well happen to us or to those we love. We cannot prevent that. What we can do, however, is decide how we will, we, how we will react when tragedy strikes. We can decide to push through the pain and sorrow or let it crush us. We can choose to elevate the memory of our loved one through actions and purpose. We can choose to make it a great day, or not. Thank you for all you've done for Wheatley these past five years, and congratulations on your graduation today. We will miss you, but we know that you're ready for what the future brings. We're all so proud of the young adults you have become. Celebrate today, you've earned this occasion, and you deserve it. My warmest wishes to all of our graduates and their families, thank you. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Mark Hamburg, President of the Board of Education. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Feeney, for allowing me to speak on behalf of the Board of Education at this morning's graduation ceremony. Welcome, everyone, family, friends, faculty, staff, and of course, our students. Congratulations to the class of 2022. It, it was just two years ago that we graduated a class from Wheatley in the parking lot at Wheatley while sitting in our cars. So what a terrific day to be back here live and celebrating all of you together. Graduates, this is truly one of those special moments that you will remember for a very long time. There is an incredible level of excitement for everyone that is here in this auditorium today. And I ask you students to take a moment and look out at your family, look out at your friends, and see how proud each and every one of them are of you. This is one of those days in life that brings with it a host of emotions, expectations, and promises which can and will be different for each of you. For your teachers, perhaps it's a day that they reflect upon a sense of accomplishment and pride and say job well done, both on their part and on yours. Then there are your parents. As parents, they know that it's not what they do for you, but what they have taught you to do for yourselves. It is, that, it is this that will make you successful human beings. But for, for today, I ask that you bear with your parents. You can't imagine the emotions they feel right now. They are looking up at you reflecting on the babies they once held, the children that they dropped off at kindergarten for the very first time, the many performances and athletic events that they went to, the family trips, the special occasions, all of these are lifelong memories. 
But next there's all of you. And you should be filled with excitement and anticipation, coupled with a tiny bit of butterflies, because you're about to embark on the next chapter of a life that holds limitless possibilities for you. It's not easy to say goodbye to such enduring friendships, many since kindergarten, nestled in such a nurturing and supportive environment that you've had the opportunity to grow up in. This is a big moment for all of you, so be open to all of these emotions and experiences. I want to take a moment and just say thank you to two people that are leaving East Wilston School District together with you today. First, our superintendent of schools, Dr. Elaine Canis, who is finishing up her 10 years with us. We thank you, Dr. Canis, for your years of service, for your strategic leadership, for your strategic leadership significant improvements that, and significant improvements that you've made to the educational structure of the East Wilston School District. Next, our principal, Dr. Sean Feeney. Thank you for your 14 years of service to the East Wilson School District. We wish you both the best of luck, Dr. Canis in your retirement, and Dr. Feeney in your next role as an assistant superintendent in the Port Washington School District. Congratulations. Today, graduates, you are all moving forward. And although part of you will always remember the past, you can now look towards the future. But before you go, I want to share a quote with you. You have brains in your head and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your way, and you know what you know, and you are the ones who will decide where to go. This quote is from Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss books had had, have had a lasting impact on American culture. I picked this quote because the best day of your life is the day on which you decide your life is your own. The gift of life is an amazing journey, and you alone are responsible for the quality of it. Everyone has the power to tap into their own greatness, to find joy and fulfillment. The way to be happy is to like yourself, and the way to like yourself is to do only things that make you proud. I want to tell you a story that supports this point, and I promise it's something that you'll use or need at one time or another. In 1859, the great Blondine, the man who invented the High Wire Act, announced to the world that he intended to cross Niagara Falls on a tightrope. 5,000 people gathered to watch this. Halfway across, Blondine suddenly stopped. He steadied himself. He backflipped, land, backflipped into the air and then landed squarely on the rope and then continued safely to the other side. During that year, Blondine crossed the falls again and again. Once he did it blindfolded, once he did it carrying a stove, once he was all chained up, and once he did it on a bicycle. Just as he was about to do it yet again, this time pushing a wheelbarrow, he turned to the crowd and shouted, who believes that I can cross pushing this wheelbarrow? Of course, every hand in the crowd went up, and Blondine pointed to one of the men in the crowd, and he asked, you, sir, do you believe I can do this? And the man said, I do. And he said, are you absolutely certain? And the man said, I am absolutely certain. Thank you, said Blondine. Now, sir, please get into my wheelbarrow. Now, you've just received a first-class education from one of the top high schools in the country. And like that man in the crowd, you know a lot of things. But also like that man, there'll be times in your life when knowing things won't matter as much as how scary the situation is. And when that happens, you'll have to decide whether or not to get into that wheelbarrow. Life is about choices you make. Choose wisely. There are two choices that I think are important. Let them be your guides. They're your values and your missions. And your mission. Values are personal choices you make about what's important to you. Family, friendship, health, wealth, learning, community, faith, integrity, creativity, adventure, and love are all examples of lifetime values. Being guided by your highest values can bring immense satisfaction and meaning to life. And then there's your mission. And thinking about your mission, know that your life is worth something. Dedicate your life to a cause greater than yourself, and your life will become a glorious romance and adventure. A goal is a dream set to paper. Don't just think it, write it down, and don't be afraid to aim high. There isn't one person in a thousand who can write down his or her most exciting dreams without at the same time telling themselves it's pro probably impossible. The truth is, virtually anything is possible. What wouldn't you attempt if you knew you could not fail, if you absolutely knew you could attain it? Know this. Walt Disney had a personal mission statement to make people happy. And Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Google's mission, was to collect all of the world's information and make it accessible to everyone. So just as Dr. Seuss in his quote said, you are the ones who'll decide where to go, you too can reflect on the many lessons you've learned in your daily life 
which will become the cornerstones of the wisdom you need to succeed in life. There are many people around you today who have great hopes for your future. There's going to become a time in your life when in order to succeed, you will have to trust, when you will have to make a great leap of faith, and when that comes, I hope that you swallow your fear and get into that wheelbarrow. So for myself and the rest of the Board of Education, we wish you the best that life has to offer. We celebrate you, we rejoice in you. Have a wonderful summer and a limited list future. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Camberg. This time, I'd like you to please join me in welcoming Dr. Elaine Canis, our Superintendent of Schools. Good morning, everybody. There is a tradition that I've inherited, which I think is a wonderful tradition, which shows a lot of the cohesiveness of our community, um, is asking everybody in the audience who has graduated from Wheatley, to, and you haven't graduated yet, so don't stand up, but the rest of you to please stand up. I think that's a testament to the strong community, and I hope soon to be graduates, someday you'll be sitting in the audience and standing up when another superintendent asks that question. So in thinking today about what to share um, with the graduates, with you, as you mark your entry to the world of work and learning beyond high school, I decided to turn to a book that was written 30 years ago that many of your parents and your teachers may know from their past but that it still continues to be a bestseller today. As business author Jim Collins writes in the preface of the most recent edition of The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People by Stephen Covey, this book is lasting because it's based on timeless principles, fairness, integrity, honesty, and human dignity, not on mere techniques or momentary fads. It's a book about building character. I will just take a few minutes to give you a quick overview of the seven habits, but know that the book itself is rich with details that will illuminate these ideas in depth. Habit one, be proactive. While reactive people think the problem is out there, there's nothing I can do, I'm just that way. Proactive people recognize their responsibility to choose how to respond to any given situation. They focus on the influence they can have on making the situation better rather than just lamenting its occurrence. Anytime we think the difficulty is out there, Covey says, hey, that's a problem because then we're empowering who's out there to control us. You can say you have no luck or you can find a way to make your luck and then achieve what you were hoping for. Habit two, begin with the end in mind. Covey writes about creating your own personal mission statement, philosophy or creed that will guide you through your whole life starting from now. The Constitution of the United States, he says, has endured and serves its vital function today because it's based on correct principles, the self-evident truths contained in the Declaration of Independence. These principles empower the Constitution with a timeless strength. A personal mission can serve the same function for each of you and each of us. Having a changeless inner core of values and principles allows us to negotiate a changing world because we always have a guidepost for decision making, no matter the changing context. Where others might struggle, it makes it easy to make what otherwise could be a hard decision if your principles and values are firmly internalized. Habit three, put first things first. Have the discipline to prioritize our day-to-day -day actions based on what's most important. Covey divides activities into four quadrants. It's an interesting activity to look to see where each of us tends to spend most of our time. 
I'll leave it to you when you read the book to analyze where the majority of your time goes, as this can be a very enlightening experience to all of us. Covey cautions that in general, we tend to react to urgent matters, or we spend time doing things that aren't important, which revolts, results in us not spending sufficient time in quadrant two, the most crucial one of all, relationship building, recognizing new opportunities, and planning. So what's habit four? Think win-win. Rather than a zero-sum mentality, if you get it, I don't. A win-win approach has an abundance mentality, the belief there's plenty out there for everyone. Following this approach, the sum result often becomes more than the parts. Habit five, seek to understand, then to be understood. This is actually, to me, my favorite habit and the one that's had the most impact on me personally. Have you ever been surprised to find out that someone has totally misunderstood a situation? In short, in Habit 5, Covey encourages us to seek to understand others' perspectives and make a commitment to empathic listening, rather than jumping to conclusions or offering opinions to others without deep understanding. Though I originally read this book 30 years ago, one of the stories in it stays as fresh in my mind today as then. Covey writes about his mini paradigm shift on Sunday when he was peacefully riding the subway and a man got on with his children. The calm, peaceful subway ride was suddenly shattered by the disruptive behavior of the children while the father sat motionless, seemingly ignoring it. Covey fumed privately and then finally, unable to contain his irritation, said to the man, Sir, your children are really disturbing a lot of people. I wonder if you couldn't control them a little more. Oh, you're right. I guess I should do something about it, the man answered. We just came from the hospital where their mother died an hour ago. I, I don't know what to think, and I guess they don't know how to handle it either. As Covey writes, suddenly his paradigm shifted, and because he saw things differently, he thought differently felt differently and behaved differently. His irritation totally banished, he asked, what can I do to help? Habit six, synergize. Thinking win-win and seeking first to understand creates synergy. Once you have habits four and five in mind, you're able to pool your desires with someone else's. You're no longer on opposing sides of the problem, and with your new expanded perspective, you can probably create an alternative that's better than either side's original one. It's an old saying, two heads are better than one. So what's habit seven, finally? Sharpen that saw. The seventh habit makes all the others possible as we regularly focus on the renewal of the four dimensions of our nature, physical, spiritual, mental, and social-emotional. Doing so empowers us to be able to move along the upward spiral of growth, change, and continuous improvement, as well as to inspire others as we show we believe in them, understand them, and support them in their proactiveness. So I hope this relatively brief summary piques your interest in reading the book as it contains many touching and meaningful stories and it offers a lot more insight than I'm able to share just here. In fact, graduates, we've purchased a copy of Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Successful People for each of you graduating seniors. Unfortunately, they are somewhere on a UPS truck because they weren't delivered on time. We will, however, be sure to send you an email and get them to you. And in the meantime, many congratulations and best wishes to you and your families on this very special day. Thank you, Dr. Canis. Our first musical selection will be performed by our very own group, 
JC Jack Trio. The group will be performing Spanish Dance No. 5 by Enrique Grandalos, Grandados. Our performers include Julian Chang on cello, Joyce Chen on violin, and Andrew Kim on viola. In the words of our performers, Spanish Dance No. 5 by Grenados is a piece full of strength, passion, and warmth reflecting the core traits of the class of 2022. With Julian Chang on the cello, Andrew Kim on the viola, and Joyce Chen on the violin, the rhythmic vitality of the Spanish style comes to life, and equal proportions of tenderness and panache allow for the trio to express the heart of our graduating class. Thank you, Joyce, Julian, and Andrew. City Jane and Emmy Keys, our illustrious co-presidents of the class of 2022, will now offer 
their greetings to the class. Good morning. My name is Sedan Jane, and I'm the president of the class of 2022. Welcome. No, that's wrong. What do you mean, that's wrong? We're co-presidents. No, Feeney told us in that senior parent meeting that I was the only one giving a speech today as the sole president. Yeah, he kind of just forgot me. That's really awkward. He felt so bad that he tried to give me a parking spot, but some other unnamed students stole it. Oh wait, really quick, I forgot to take my B-Real. Smile. You're such a B-Faker. Let's try this again. Good morning. My name is Sadan Jane, and I'm the co-president of the class of 2022. Welcome to our ceremony this morning. My name is Amelia Keys, and I'm the better co-president of the class of 2022. First, we need to get all the formalities out of the way. Thank you to the Tilla Center for hosting us. Thank you to the Board of Ed. Thank you to all our teachers. And families. And administrators. And Mr. Clovis. And the lunch lady who always gives me extra food. A special thank you to Dr. Feeney for being a great principal to all of us. And on behalf of our grade, we wish you success and happiness in your future endeavors. When Dr. Feeney told us we had to give a combined speech, we were a little confused because this isn't a normal thing. We tried to convince him, but since it's his last year, he doesn't really care. Regardless, <laughs> regardless, we spent a lot of time reflecting on our years at Wheatley and what we could write about. We both felt strongly about Wheatley's community about how Wheatley changes the students as much as the students change Wheatley. About how the people we meet here are beautiful, blonde, 5'4", Georgia bound. Are you bound. flirting with me? Wait, is this like that time you asked me out in seventh grade over text? Um, I didn't realize we were gonna bring that up, but do you remember when you asked me to prom? I guess the turntables have turned. I think your mom actually paid me. Oh, so I guess my mom also paid you the All night right, up. let's move on. Fine. Emmy's beauty aside, Wheatley has truly defined what a community is. Right now, though we may be glad to put this behind us, we will remember it as one of the strongest families we've ever had. All of us are transitioning to a new part in our lives right now. Our parents are going to adjust to having one less kid by compensating with another dog. And we have to deal with no longer having I bagel coffee at 7 a.m. every morning. But as we move on, there are a few things that we must remember. I want to prime us with a quote from Viktor Frankl. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, and to choose one's own way. Every morning when we wake up, we have the choice to get out of bed. Every time the bell rings, we have the choice to pay attention or play 2048. More subtly though, we have a choice in how we approach our life, in the way we exist, interpret, and react in our day-to-day -day lives. One of the more important choices we make probably hundreds of times a day is the choice to be present. As Albert Einstein once said, put your hand on a hot stove for a minute and it seems like an hour. Sit with a pretty girl like Emmy for an hour and it seems like a minute. That is relativity. Yeah, that's probably why the speech is going by so quickly. Good one. Everyone always hears about how there's no past or future, but only the present. Carpe diem, live life to the fullest, seize the day, etc., etc. But why and how? As we graduate and look back at the past 13 years, a lot of us probably feel like the days just flew by. If we take time to be fully present in each moment that we are in, each second can become just a little bit longer. We spent a lot of our high school life striving for a goal in the future, stressing over test grades and clubs and college decisions, but this summer, as we finish out our last few years at home, weeks at home, try and just be. Eat dinners with your family and spend time with your relatives. Even though it's hard, put your phone down when you're out with your friends. Try and live in the present whenever you can. When you're present in your day-to-day -day life, you begin to notice more about the world around you. But sometimes, life doesn't always go your way. You'll get a 60 on your first Calvano Calc BC test. Or you get sent home from the seventh grade outdoor ed trip due to a bed bug infestation. When all of that happens, it's even harder to feel like the world is on your side. But in times of difficulty, it helps to look at your circumstances as the best thing that ever happened to you. For example, if I hadn't rejected City, he probably would have thought his red hair phase was a good idea. And I'm grateful for that. Gratitude as a whole has had numerous studies that prove its multiple benefits. Increased happiness, reduced stress, increased resilience. Blah, blah, blah. Just know it's a good thing. I'm also grateful for you constantly cutting me off. Let's do a quick exercise to kickstart our brains for some gratitude. Let's start pretty simple. Think about three people that make your life better. 
Think about three ways that you have been insanely lucky. And the best part is, you don't even have to share your thoughts to feel the benefits of gratitude. But it does always help when you tell someone you're grateful for them. Hey, Siddy, thanks for being a great co-president these past six years. Thanks, Em. Another choice that we make every day is how we react to our situations. We've all dealt with some serious loss these past few years. One year today, Anthony Leva passed away. And just a few months ago, our classmate Hassan Suleiman passed away. The way that we all collectively decided to be there for one another exemplifies the community that Wheatley fosters. At the first annual Levathon last month, Mr. Wilson said, loss is inevitable, but healing is a choice. Wheatley has chosen to heal together, and instead of letting our grief divide us, it's truly brought us closer. As we move through the rest of our lives, we will encounter more grief and more unfairness. How we choose to deal with the most difficult of situations is what defines us. This brings us to our last and most important choice, the choice of mindset. The power of our minds cannot be understated. We have the power to choose which thoughts we feed with attention, the power to choose which thoughts will grow. If we fixate on doubts or the potential of failing, we allow these self-defeating thoughts to blossom. Instead, focus on giving the positive thoughts more interest and enthusiasm. Try and foster a positive mindset. A mindset which encompasses realistic optimism with acceptance when things inevitably don't go your way. One which fosters resilience to pursue your goals in the face of adversity. One that is grateful for every situation our crazy world will place you in. And one that mindfully exists in our world. With integrity in its thoughts, speech, and actions. As we go through a huge change in our lives, we need to set ourselves up for success. And not just financial or career success, but success in our relationships and in terms of happiness. I know I'm probably quoting too much, but this will probably be my last one. Napoleon Hill, an author, said, what the, man, what the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. If we can just believe in ourselves and in those around us, we can achieve anything. We are powerful not because we went to Wheatley. Or because we were surrounded by bald people all day. But rather, because we are driven in our thoughts. Thank, Thank you, and, and congratulations, congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you, City and Emmy. Each year, members of the graduating class are offered the opportunity to submit essays for the commencement ceremony. A panel of faculty and students selected three essays for today's program. Please welcome our first speaker, Declan Brady. His essay is titled, The Wheatley Way. Good morning, Dr. Feeney, Dr. Clapper, Dr. Canis, Board of Education, teachers, families, and my fellow members of the Wheatley class of 2022. Standing here today and saying that line is still so surreal to me, as I feel like it was just yesterday when we, as kindergartners, received mugs with a class photo that read, the class of 2022, which seemed like such a wildly distant year at the time. Today, though, I'm here to talk about the so-called Wheatley Way. And no, I don't mean Dr. Feeney's famous blog. Rather, I'm talking about the phrase that's occasionally used in a somewhat negative light to describe the alleged mindsets and behaviors of Wheatley students. Among other things, it's used to represent the expectation that a 75 will always somehow round to an A minus, as well as the practice of casually coming to school 20 minutes late every day. In general, it's meant to articulate the lifestyle that many purportedly subscribe to within the Wheatley bubble. That being said, the use of this phrase has often rubbed me the wrong way. To me, the Wheatley way, or the way of Wheatley students, is so much more than just that, which is nowhere near representative of the Wheatley I've attended since eighth grade. While I don't totally dispute the periodic laziness or lateness, especially over the past few months, I want to explain why that's just one minor aspect of the class of 2022's Wheatley Way. A good starting point for this would be in seventh grade at Willits Road Middle School, 
After what seemed like the craziest, most disruptive thing that would happen in our school careers, the cancellation of outdoor ed due to bed bugs, that is, the class of 2022 came together and bonded through this collective struggle. Whether it was exchanging clothes you accidentally took from the item pickup at the Woolwich Gym, sharing the experience of having to put a plastic bag over yourself before getting in your car, or becoming spirited for the sake of a fun battle of the bunks on the Friday after we were brought home, the feelings of unity and perseverance were palpable. But oh, how innocent we were to the COVID-induced challenges in store for us. While I suppose this was more of the Willits way, it's a spirit that carried forward to Wheatley and helped us face challenges that were to come. Further, the Wheatley way is unfettered dedication, which many Costco and Stop and Shop employees could attest to when the Friday afternoon of Showdown comes along every year, and wallets are emptied and shelves are cleared in the name of beating the grades above or below you. And while Wheatley may not have the stereotypical football game type school spirit that you see in the movies, it'd be hard to find a group of seniors who get more excited about accomplishing a shared goal than Wheatley students during Showdown Week. The Wheatley way is success on the field, court, or track, and also in the classroom. It's winning Long Island championships in baseball, soccer, and tennis, and qualifying for state championships in cross country and track. It's earning awards for scientific research, National History Day projects, and many other competitions. It's taking AP classes while also managing to participate in sports and extracurricular activities. It's building valuable relationships and communities through clubs, teams, and service, which are important successes in their own right. The Wheatley Way is learning about and celebrating our differences, whether culturally or ideologically. It's appreciating the wide array of ethnicities represented at Wheatley on ICU Day by watching performances and sharing food. It's understanding the importance of civic involvement and constructive discussion during the Student Senate's annual Current Events Forum. It's having the opportunity to explore these issues further in the debate club, Mali United Nations, or in-class discussions. The Wheatley Way is adapting to new historic developments in the world and changing the way we learn in response. It's always remembering to say, bye, thank you, before leaving a Google Meet, regardless of how much attention you are paying. It's creating new methods, like the head nod, to acknowledge someone in the hallway without them being able to see or smile through the mask. It's adjusting to being back in school during the pandemic when most other people were not, and being grateful for the fact that we could be together while much of the world was still apart. The Wheatley Way is reaching out to and comforting classmates and friends in the face of unfathomable tragedy. It's coming together to grieve and support one another at the absolute darkest of times. It's unfortunately realizing the potential brutality of life and how precious every moment, especially ones on a day like today, truly is. Now, in fairness, that's a lot of content to fall under a single label. And of course, there's no one person sitting here today who fully embodies all these ideas. After all, the Wheatley Way isn't a product of individual achievements or accomplishments, but rather a result of the contributions and actions of a collective group. And while there may have been some latenesses and plenty of cringeworthy moments along the way, I'm proud to say that I'm an attempted follower of the Wheatley Way with absolutely no regrets about it. To all of those once kindergartners on that mug and everyone who came after them, thank you for an incredible, unforgettable ride. Congratulations to the Wheatley class of 2022. Thank you, Declan. Our second musical selection will be performed by Kritika Prajapati with accompaniment by Mr. Rip Wilson. Kritika will sing Breakaway, written by Matthew Girard, Bridget Beninate, and Avril Levine, and famously performed by Kelly Clarkson. In the words of our performer, Breakaway is a song about growing up and moving into new beginnings. It's about following your dreams while also remembering your roots, where you started, and the people who helped you get to where you are. It's about remembering you could not have gotten to where you are without experiencing everything you did, whether it was good or bad. I chose this song because its positive message can represent any one of us 
despite all of us having unique stories and features and, and futures in store. It encourages us to take chances, be fearless, and have high hopes for the future since the possibilities are limitless. Grew up in a small town, and when the rain would fall down, I'd just stare out my window, dreaming of what could be, and if I'd end up happy, I would pray. Trying hard to reach out, but when I tried to speak out, felt like no one could hear wanted to belong here, but something felt so wrong here, so I'd pray I could break away. I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. I'll do what it takes till I touch the sky. And I'll make a wish, take a chance, make a change, and break away. that I love and I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change and break away. Da 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 Wanna feel the warm breeze, sleep under a palm tree, feel the rush of the ocean. Get on board a fast train, travel on a jet plane far away and break away. I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. I'll do what it takes till I touch the sky. And I'll make a wish, take a chance, make a change and break away. that I love and I'll take a risk, take a chance, make a change and break away. Buildings with a hundred floors, swinging round revolving doors, maybe I don't know where they'll take me, but gotta keep moving on, moving on, fly away, break away. I'll spread my wings and I'll change and break away out of the darkness and into the sun but I won't forget the place I come from and I'll take a risk take a chance make a change and break away break Thank you, Kritika. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Please welcome our second honor essay speaker, Tyler Horwitz. Her essay is titled, I Have an Answer. Every day while coming home from school, my parents will ask me the same question. Tyler, what did you learn at school today? And if you want to go up to them and ask them what their daughter's golden responses have been throughout the years, they can't tell you. They're still wondering too. It's been a long five years of me being an annoying teenager and responding, I don't know, proceeding with a shrug, 
maybe an eye roll or two if they're lucky, and then I put my AirPods in and call it a day as if I gave a sufficient answer. At first, my parents didn't mind, but I think after a while, they started to get just the teensiest bit annoyed with me. And if actions do speak louder than words, I always thought that my signature eye roll worked beautifully. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry. I really am. I never meant to come across rude or show that I didn't care for our conversations. Honestly, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know if you wanted me to tell you that I learned about hydrogen bonds or the Pythagorean theorem or who the 35th president was. Because maybe instead, you wanted me to tell you that I learned that my classmate can fit 20 whole grapes in their mouth at once or that I learned that you cannot, in fact, slide on the gym floor while playing wiffle ball to steal a base, or else you too are going to learn that day that you are going to take me back to the store to get me a new pair. Sorry. Anyways, as you can tell, every day at Wheatley is filled with something new where the opportunities to learn some things both inside and outside of the classroom here are endless. However, I think one of my favorite things that I've come to learn about Wheatley is that you can find friendships in the most unexpected ways. Time after time, I found myself striking up conversations with classmates who I viewed as polar opposites from myself. Despite our dissimilarities, our efforts to better understand one another is what made for the most amazing friendships, which led to the most amazing memories. I personally feel so fortunate to consider myself a Wheatley stu student for several reasons. For one, our tight-knit community is truly unique and has a support system like no other. We truly are one big happy family here. I mean, not too many of my other friends from other school districts can say that they can point out any random student at their school and name their mother and their father and their sister and their brother and their brother's camp friend and their brother's best friend's camp friend's dog whose name is Max, and I think you get the point. Wheatley has given me the platform to learn who I am and what I want to be. I've learned to be a determined person. If you run for student government six years in a row and lose six years in a row, and don't give up a seventh year in a row, you can win. I've learned that if you're the only senior on your varsity basketball team, it doesn't matter. You will find friendships in all ages, which will become your family. I've learned that at the end of the day, teamwork is the most valuable thing, and without it, you cannot completely create and pull off a projection of the Wheatley Varsity Review in the span of 12 hours. I've learned the importance of responsibility because if I forget my school ID for the thousandth time, I will be continuing to take that hike to the glass doors in the morning. I've learned to remain a positive person, because even if your graduation speech gets accidentally omitted, you could still be standing up here today. Yet, I've also learned that even in your darkest times, you are never alone at the Wheatley School. Someone at Wheatley is always there for you, faculty or student. I've learned that the choice really is yours. You have the power to control what path you go down and how to make a change in yourself and in the world around you. I've learned that a simple actness goes a long way and never goes unnoticed. How could I ever forget that my principal would stand in a literal tornado just to wish me a good morning? Role models are defined as people who others look up to or who have traits that make them good people that others try to be like. And this is what the class of 2022 is to me. I know, I know, we're a controversial bunch, yes with maybe not the best ideas here and there, but overall, collectively, the most amazing group of people. No matter how much we've been through together, we always have each other's backs and learn how to adapt and rise back up again. At Wheatley, we've gained the understanding that the beauty of learning is that it's never ending. We can continue to be like sponges and absorb all the knowledge we can to keep growing to become the best versions of ourselves. Wheatley and our experiences here have helped us flourish, and I, for one, will always remember what I've learned here as I continue towards the next phase of my life. While I won't be here next year, I think that I'll definitely carry on everything that Wheatley has taught me, like how to be a great student, but more importantly, how to be a good person. So mom, dad, I hope I finally answered your question about what I've learned at school. I'm sorry I haven't given you a response for the past five years. There was just too much to say in such little time as it went by so unbelievably fast. Thank you, Tyler. Please welcome our third honor essay speaker, Jeremy Kang. His essay is titled, The Wheatley School. Thank you. 
the Wheatley School. <laughs> For the record, it isn't Wheatley or Wheatley High School. It's the Wheatley School. And I'm sure some of you noticed during your college search that Wheatley is always listed as Wheatley School, comma, the. It's a word we throw around in everyday use, yet put it in front of Wheatley School, and the school evolves far beyond a normal high school. An entirely ordinary word grants our school a completely new identity. In fact, listen to this exchange I had recently. Where do you go to high school? Wheatley. Where? Oh, sorry. I should have specified. It's the Wheatley School. You know, the Wheatley School. Like, come on. The vast majority of us never call Wheatley by its full name. It's much more convenient and efficient to just say Wheatley. Imagine if all of our sports teams were named the, the Wheatley School Wildcats. I'd never have joined the soccer team. Yet, today I'd like to advocate that what appears like unnecessary, extra monotonous words have a much greater significance that not one of us has considered. The Wheatley School. There's an aspect of singularity in that name. Something individual, something unique, something intriguing. The is the single most commonly used word in the English language. It's regarded as a definite article because it applies a definite meaning to a noun. In conversation, we often utilize definite articles to describe nouns that the audience is already familiar with, like the Wheatley bathrooms that are fully the worst, and the senior lounge that isn't even reserved for the seniors. I'll go out on a limb and say most of us consider ourselves somewhat familiar with the Wheatley School. The effect of the definite article alters our relationship with school and those in it. Simply because it's the Wheatley School, our sense of community and connection with one another is reinforced. That's not to take away from the wonderful staff and welcoming environment already established at Wheatley. The Wheatley School fosters student growth unknown to other high schools. The Wheatley School enables intricate student-teacher relationships that wouldn't be possible at an average high school. Because of the Wheatley School and the tight bonds we have developed, we've been shaped and molded into the characters we are today. And hopefully, we carry those relationships as we take the next step forward together. Together, we embody one identity, a single being that encompasses the Wheatley School. With a relatively smaller total of students, the Wheatley School becomes almost exclusive, like a premium membership or subscription, minus the monthly fees. In this way, the Wheatley experience simply falls into a separate category. For example, Showdown. A competition of the grades isn't specific to Wheatley. However, the sheer intensity of the atmosphere created during Showdown Week is nothing short of an extravaganza. Each year, I'm determined to not get too invested, yet by the time the finale rolls around, the excitement becomes too overwhelming to remain reserved. Showdown allows us to truly unite as a class and represent ourselves as one body. The class of 2022. All of a sudden, that label attains another level of prestige and credibility that instills an enhanced sense of pride within the recipients. But every school has a class of 2022, so what makes us any different? How can we be the class of 2022? It's simple, really. We aren't. But we are. The class of 2022 will be defined by the people they become in the future. As of right now, we may not appear qualified enough to claim that title. Yet at the same time, every one of us is capable of limitless potential that says otherwise. I'm confident that the people I gaze upon now will surely change and influence the world. The amount of talent gathered here today is astronomical. All of your perseverance and commitment until now has absolutely paid off. Before me are blossoming artists and musicians, fierce athletes and graduates passionate in their relative fields, all intelligent individuals that will lead, entertain, captivate, protect, and run the world as the future approaches. Every single one of us is indispensable 
to the success and longevity of the world ahead. And as much as I am fearful of the unknown that lies ahead, I find comfort knowing that the class of 2022 is undoubtedly before me at this very moment. And it's purely a matter of time before it comes to fruition. Although the time has finally come for us to venture out and write our own life stories, we all share the same origin. No matter if it was for five years or one, the Wheatley School is a part of each and every one of us. We as a class have experienced an immense amount of hardships, even stemming from Willits, when outdoor ed got cut short. The pandemic flipped our lives upside down, inside out and backwards, yet we trudged along, balancing our school and social lives in what seemed like an apocalyptic world. And most importantly, we are unfortunately one graduate short today. Hassan remains in all of our hearts as we begin to branch off into the world. No matter where we go, the Wheatley School is in our skin and bones. We should wear that identity with pride. Although unorthodox, it's never too late to show the Wheatley School the respect it deserves. We are graduates of the Wheatley School. Let us live up to that badge of honor as the graduating class of 2022. Thank you, Jeremy. Ms. Merrill Ford and President of the East Williston Teachers Association will now present a special award. Thank you. It's an honor to be here this morning as we graduate the class of 2022. For the past 39 years, the East Williston Teachers Association has awarded the David K. Israel Scholarship to a graduating senior who plans on becoming a teacher. The scholarship is named after a 40-year veteran English teacher who served as the East Williston Teachers Association president for more than a quarter of a century. David was the founding trustee of the EWTA Scholarship Foundation that presents this award today. I am proud to announce that this scholarship is renewable for three additional years of undergraduate work provided the recipient reaffirms his or her commitment to educating the students of tomorrow. As president of this union, I cannot think of a more fitting way for a group of teachers to honor our profession and give back to the community. This year, the seniors who submitted applications for our scholarship have already accomplished great things, and choosing among them was difficult. The screening committee determined that the student we honor today already exhibits many of the characteristics necessary to become an outstanding educator. One teacher describes this student as born to be a teacher. They are a natural. This student is gushingly enthusiastic about the books and the authors they love. The student is an astute reader with fresh insights and confidence. This student has taught meticulously well-prepared lessons in SWS. The student feedback for the class was so outstanding, so much so, that the students demanded a follow-up class. This student, is, this student is described by another faculty member as an incredible student of literature. The student is an excellent participant in discussions, always analyzing deeply and reading closely. This student has the ability to take whatever text is being read and make it relatable to all the students in the class, a skill which is very necessary as an educator. This student is passionate about his subject area and about helping students. He is intelligent and quick thinking. I, says this faculty member, enthusiastically recommend him for this scholarship. Having read his essay, it is clear to me that this student understands that a successful educator is one who connects with his students. He has already taught two hugely successful classes in SWS. This experience exposed him to the realities of teaching, especially the issues of grading and engaging the uninterested learner. What is most impressive, however, is this student's desire and his strong ideas as to what makes a great teacher. 
he already understands that encouraging creativity, individual exploration, and helping students discover who they are and what they want is as important as the curriculum. Sometimes, schools can be a difficult place, and teachers are always there to make it better. It is this student's ultimate goal to be one of those teachers. Indiana University is truly fortunate to welcome him this fall. It is with great pleasure that I present the David K. Israel Scholarship to Mr. Lucas Schmuck. Thank you, Ms. Ford, and congratulations, Lucas. Mr. Robert Fallerino, Vice President of the Board of Education, will now present the Dr. Jane Ann Smith Citizenship Award. Thank you, Dr. Feeney. It is my pleasure to be able to present the Dr. Jane Ann Smith Award for Citizenship to a member of the senior class of 2022. This award was named after an outstanding member of the East Williston Board of Education who served with great distinction from 1965 to 1983 and as board president from 1978 to 81. The students selected by the members of the class of 2022 as a classmate who might be best described as one who has demonstrated interest in improving the school or community one who has maintained high personal ideals, principles, and values, one who has aimed to maintain and improve school or community spirit, one who has shown a high degree of responsibility, reliability, and loyalty, one who has been willing to work hard for an important goal without the thought of reward or self-importance. It is my distinct honor to be able to present the 2022 Jack the Jane Ann Smith Citizen Award to Maya Kale. Congratulations, Maya. At this time, we're going to begin the conferral of the diplomas. Declan Brady. <laughs> Julian Chang. <laughs> Joyce Chen.
you tell her to do that? Well, you see, you know what this is? This is the fact that the diploma is in an order, and if something's out of order, everything's screwed up. Am I taking that with me? Are you taking it with The card? Yeah. It's yours. It'll have your name on it. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler Horowitz. <laughs> Sidhan Jane. Daniel Joshua. Jeremy Kang. <laughs> Amelia Keys. Andrew Kim. Kritika Pajapathy. Hey, can you do salsa with me? So salsa, salsa. Let's do it. Salsa. <laughs> Zane Adelwahab. Eliani Acosta. <laughs> Kalik Ahmed. Do you remember my name? Marjan Aligavand. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. You got it. You got it. Marjan Alakaban. Gabriel Aaron. Same. Melody Ariaza. Danielle Avila. Malia Ayaz.
Patrick Barrera. Kevin Barrett. <laughs> Jamie Bihar. Jordan Bihar. Patrick Vile. Gabriel Fallerino. Luke Eberlein. Ryan Dome. Ashwarya Dama. Sanjay Dianeri. Marco Diodato. Colin Delay. Michael Delgaz. Aiden Dearborn. Anna Daniels. Sabrina Denalian. Gregory Cunny. Brian Shirell. Sophia Caputo. Juliana Cappy. Maya Kale. Alexis Burke. James Blano, Emma Berkson, Hao Yan Gan, Marco Garcia. Nicolette Benavitzi.
Nicole Benevitzi. Aiden G. Dylan Gadanian. Benjamin Gold. Skylar Goldberg. Andrew Golub. Gregory Gottlieb. Anthony Gracia. Shrey Gulati. Lauren Hackett. Matthew Hetzel. Sarah Hochstein. Charlotte Iannone. Nicholas Iglesias. Travis Isaac. Jake Jackness. Sahani Jane. Kajal Kapoor. William Karikis. <laughs> Jacob Meyerowitz. Angelo Marchione. Andre Massano. Peter Love. Rosanna Lopez. Michael Liberato. Jack Lindenauer. Yan Jun Lin. Xiao Ten Li. Yep. 
Winston Lee. To Shar Kumar. Constantine Kusoftis. Ashley Cop. Ian Kim. Sean Killen. Daniel Khan. Asher Kaufman. Ainsley Forrest. Rachel Fasulo. Ethan Mulqueen. Carmela Nardo. Caroline O'Brien. James O'Connell. Ryan O'Connell. Alexandra Offsey. Nicole Offsey. Mornike Ashodi. Isaac Ostad. Rebecca Ostad. And Sarah Ostad. Arman Pahuja. Emma Pack. Victoria Papa. Marissa Predretti. Jason Pedro. Justin Parasino. Victoria Patrapelic. Aristomenes Salidas. Ajay Ramnarayan. Ariella Rahan.
Sydney Siskin. Rajbir Singh. Josh Singh. Dylan Silva. Kevin Shukla. Anushka Shorwala. Catherine Shimanov. Jordana Scheinman. Om Shah. Japesh Shah. Jaina Shah. Kate Siao. Julia Schriefer. Scott Schmuck. Lucas Schmuck. Brian Schmuck. Aiden Sanders. Juliana Samponia. Kyle Rosenberg. Angel Romero. Ashley Royt. Jaden Rizko. Emma Resnick. Paul Mara. Benjamin Marone. Juliana Mendez. Jeffrey Melnikov. Josh Salamani. Daniel Solomon. Nicholas Sukra.
At this moment, we invite Hassan's sister on stage to accept Hassan's diploma. For Hassan Suleiman. Kate Sullivan. <clears throat> Matthew Tempkin. Raquel Teo. Constantino Trantifelu. Jonathan Yusharov. Yeah. Erica Yustik. Kayla Voss. Evan Wang. Hannah Weinberg. Daniel Wong. Justin Wong. Ryan Wu. Jace Yagoda. Elad Yershami. Kristen Zachariah. Yusef Safar. Miriam Zakaria. Allison Zeller. Catherine Zhang. Dr. Canis, Mr. Camberg, and members of the Board of Education, as principal of the Wheatley School, I am proud to certify that the 159 members of the class of 2022 have met their obligations for graduation under the rules and regulation of the East Williston Union Free School District Board of Education in the state of New York. 
As such, these students should join the 9,649 students over the previous 64 years who have earned the right to be called a Wheatley graduate. At this time, I'd like to ask the Dr. Jane Ann Smith Award winner, Maya Kale, to join me at the podium. The tassel is a symbol of your success. By wearing it on your right side, it symbolizes that you've earned the right to graduate. Moving it to the left side of your cap is symbolic of the crossing over from high school to the next stage of your life. Would all the graduates please rise? As Maya leads you in the symbolic moving of the tassel from right to left. And now, Maya will also carefully lead the class in the tossing of the caps. Go ahead. Congratulations, Wheatley graduates. So you go back to your seat. Thank you for joining us on this most special occasion. The Wheatley Combined Bands will perform the, the processional under the direction of Dr. Peggy Ho. To conclude our ceremony, the graduates request that audience members remain at their seats until the recessional is completed. Have a great day. Dr. Ho.